Hello there viewers, we are now at the end of Season 4 and we have some really good news. But before we do that, massive thank you to everyone who has sponsored the Patreon in the last month or two. Uh, I know from obviously the FM Scout video, a lot of you decided to come to my channel and show your support and I really do appreciate that. However, I know a lot of you were stung by the fact that because you joined the Patreon late in the month, that the first of the month came and then you were charged again. And I completely understand why a couple of people have dropped off because of that, uh, thinking that they have been overcharged or whatsoever. Unfortunately, that's sort of like how Patreon is set up. It's a really bad way of setting up. I wish that if you had just paid that month, then you only get charged at that 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 date that you that you joined every month, and then obviously I only get the money at the first when I can withdraw it. Uh, it's a weird situation. However, uh, if you I think you've been overcharged. It, it is just how it is. But if you'd like to rejoin the Patreon but don't want to be charged yet again, uh, just give me a message because I can refund you the, the what, you're, what you've been paying. If you would pay it again, I can refund you that if you'd like to join uh, back up to the Patreon and show your support. So I really do appreciate everyone who has joined. Uh, we, we went up massively. The Patreon like doubled. So it's I've almost got back what I made uh, on a monthly basis from FM Scout. And that's thanks to you guys. So uh, from my family, because we all really appreciate it, uh, massive thank you for doing just that and supporting the Patreon. It really means the world to me. Anyway, we're Ross's Amination. So here we are then viewers, we knew that we were probably going to get promoted in uh, in this in this league because obviously we did in the last episode, we were, we were so far ahead, we knew we were going to get promoted. So there it is, we have been promoted, we are 10 points behind Lille though, so really far off the pack and today we are going to be playing against Brighton. So a nice easy fixture that we can just enjoy the end of the season where I can talk about while we are playing some players that I've got plans with and we're also going to have a look at a player spotlight. Before we get underway, we're going to look at the player before we do the game, just as a switch around. What you will notice, though, is that player stats, that's ridiculous, right? Sandro Tonali has the highest average rating, the most assists, the best pass completion, and the most man of the matches joint with Kyle George, who is our top goal scorer on 29 goals. Phenomenal stuff. Sandro Tonali, what a pickup he was uh, this last season or two done really well he's done really well we all know he's good though the last couple of fms he's been absolutely outstanding and i've really enjoyed using him so the player we're going to look at today for this player spotlight is lazaro now remember i bought this player in right at the end of the transfer window this season 40 million pound i splashed uh for this brazilian eight goals one assist not that good in the league total. 13 goals in total as well. Uh, but he is young. He's 21 years old. He still has a lot of potential to get better and better. And I'm quite pleased with that because his attributes are already special, if you ask me. Some really good physical attributes. The mental attributes, though, is where it's at. Mentally, he's really good, which is why I'm quite surprised he's underperforming slightly. Uh, technical attributes still rather decent. What I'm basically doing with training is I'm actually training him as a shadow striker in the cam roll. I know I've been playing him up front, uh, but I've been training him as the, the shadow striker because it would train more uh, attributes that I prefer. And while I'm playing him in the striker role, he's not going to like lose or like forget how to play the striker role. So I'm going with that the shadow striker uh, in that camera, I think, is a good way of training what I would like to be training. For instance, passing, work rate, off the ball, all good things that I would like for my strikers as well. We are also training him to round the goalkeeper, and I did mention it a few episodes ago how he likes to round the goalkeeper, uh, but because he's very good at it, and I've seen him do it a few times anyway, I thought, why not actually get it as a player trait? It's a player trait that I like to use on pacey um, uh, strikers or wingers who have really good physical attributes in agility and acceleration and dribbling and technique, so it, it's, it's a perfect player trait for him. So we are training him to do that. Uh, if we do look at progress, I wonder whether we can see what he's been doing all time round. He hasn't gone up a lot, to be honest. And it actually only says free kick taken is the only thing that's genuinely gone up. And bravery has gone down. So, hey, I don't really understand what's going on there. But he does have some green ups. It Maybe it's just they've not got to a total of one yet. That's fine. As long as he's still here and progressing and playing well, I'm happy. Before we actually look at 
uh, the the oh, before we actually go into the last game, sorry, I'm actually quite curious to look at the other leagues to see if there's any more important games going on. So as we can see, going down today, we have three, at least three or four really important games here. Uh, Burnley, River Plate, they can all go down. This is quite intriguing, to be honest. So. It's going to be interesting to see whether Burnley can beat the drop. However, it won't really matter to us in the long run because next season we won't be in this league anymore. We're going to be up in the Coca-Cola Premiership, which is this league. Now, Leipzig, there, that is still a lot to play for. We could still see a Lazio champions there. Bournemouth uh, look like or Bournemouth or Everton or Zenit or West Ham all fighting for that place. Even Borussia Dortmund could get it. That playoff spot there, so that's quite intriguing. Uh, Schalke is the only team who has been confirmed to be relegated in that league as well. So we still don't quite know who we're going to be playing against next season. That excites me. I like that kind of thing. And the World Super League, it actually looks like this. With one game to play, Manchester United of all teams are in the driving seat. With just two points in front of Paris Saint-Germain. Can Liverpool win it? They could. Liverpool could win it. They have a really good... Goal difference compared to Manchester United, who somehow only have a seven goal difference, but are about to win the league. So that's that actually baffles me. Athletic Club or Athletic Bilbao, uh, after going up last season, have already been relegated. So we will play against Atletico Bilbao and Athletic Bilbao, sorry, and Valencia next season. Potentially Napoli and Wolves. So <laughs> some big teams there. So we are against Brighton today, who are sitting in fourth place in that playoff uh, position. This is the team we're going to go with, the very familiar lineup that we usually have. We don't necessarily have any injuries or suspensions. We just have Renier, who's come back from an injury recently and only at 75% match fitness, but he's fully fit to actually play a condition-wise. So the team looks as usual. Even our bench is really strong today. Now, they do have a very strange side, Brighton. Uh, but I still think they're very beatable. Now, in in terms of like players that we have, um, who we might end up getting, we got a highlight within one minute. It's going to be cleared out. Renier is going to pick it up. Renier is one of these players I'm still unsure about. You know, uh, sometimes he plays amazing. Like recently, he scored four. I didn't even show you the results in between the last episode, uh, but it doesn't matter. We've we've gone on and won the league. Uh, he scored twice. In two games, so that's going to be offside. Uh, so he's got a brace in two games of the last four that we've played. So that tells me that sometimes he can play amazing, but I'm, it still confuses me. Still confuses me because when we seem to be playing in the live com, he does nothing. Now, other players who we might actually see leave is Nicolo Armini. Now, the reason why is because he does not want to be here whatsoever he had a little bit of interest from other clubs and he wants to leave now i do have my eye on a really good center back who is actually better than nicola armini and wants to come to the club or he is interested in coming to the club uh, for a little bit more than what i think i can get for armini but if i can get that deal to work i will definitely do that kyle george puts it in it's a foul though uh, from locatelli so that's understandable why they've given that Mikolenko again, another throw in. Hans Salins nodded it on. It's bouncing around in the six yard box, but it's been clear once again. We can get this goal, but we are absolutely all over them right now. It's played in against another corner, and this time round, Renier puts it in. So he does score from a live com. He heard me say it, and he's actually done the business. So that's fantastic. Uh, good for him. But yes, Armini. As much as I'd like to keep him because he is one of my favourite players on this game, if not my favourite player on this game, I always seem to get him uh, because of how cheap you can get him and how good he actually is. He doesn't want to be here. And if players don't want to be here, they'll just run their contract out. And I can't really afford that. So I think we cash in on him if he does, if he does definitely want to leave. Especially if we can get this other centre-back. I haven't seen what I can get transfer budget-wise yet uh, for the next season. I'd imagine it would be around about the same as what it was last year. Around about 50 million, I, I guess, uh, when we get the prize money for finishing in second place. Um, but I think 
we can do some business in this transfer window. There's a few players who I don't mind offloading. What a ball that is, Lazaro. That's poor effort. Uh, I wouldn't mind offloading from the reserves and stuff like that to, to build up like 5 million here or there, uh, where I think we can build up a nice transfer budget. Uh, and maybe if Armini leaves, then we've got a very good transfer budget so that we can bring in some youngsters, we can bring in that centre-back. And other than that, I don't really see where we can strengthen our side. That's also going to be offside. Unfortunate. I think like with Lazaro, Kyle George, who has proven that he is the goal scorer that we needed instead of Morelos. He's proven that. Les Jack getting better and better attribute-wise. He just needs to perform better. We've even got Louis Montenu on the bench still. Uh, we've got players like Antonio Governo, who is out on loan the second half of the season so that he guarantees first-team football so that when he comes back, we can take a look at him again uh, because I am toying with going three up top uh, with how bad Renier has been a few times. Uh, we've been training that role as a secondary tactic the three up top with the same sort of formation because I do like the two centre backs with the two wing backs and that is a red card. Goodbye, proper. Well, it's time to make our other two changes. I'm going to bring on the two strikers, Les Jack and Louis Montenu, uh, just to see if they can get us another goal as we play against 10 men Brighton for this last 15 to 20 minutes. Not that it's really going to matter. Uh, we can't go down a position or we can't go up a position, so it doesn't necessarily matter at all. It kind of matters to them though. It does actually matter to them. If they win, they would go above Porto. But it doesn't look like they're going to do so. The 95th minute is where we will hear the full-time whistle. We do have a corner before that. Armenia of all people heads it in. And I bet he's kissing the badge. I bet he's kissing the badge. Well, he should be. Because what we have done for him has been outstanding. We've given fasting football from day one, which he definitely would not have got at Lazio. And we're going to be, we could be playing against Lazio very soon and if we beat them then he's made a good decision hasn't he but he wants to leave we'll see we'll see so there we have it then we've received 47 million pound for finishing in second place so we haven't been given like next year's budgets or anything like that yet but we can see so far around about 44 million pound in the trans budget 98 million in the overall balance I'm happy with that because the wage budget is really high compared to what we're spending, another 500 grand. So we can toy around with that if we need to and we need more transfer budget. So I think we're good. I think we're good for the transfers uh, for next season. We should be absolutely fine. Shall we see how other leagues have ended up? Because this is how we have ended up. Brighton will be playing in the playoff to go up. Uh, River Plate will be playing in the playoff to go down. Sampdoria, Torino and Copenhagen all going down this season. Porto and Lille coming up with us. So good for them. Now, player, uh, we go on to the league profile. That is the Coca-Cola Premiership. Lazio promoted with Sevilla and Zenit in the playoff. Leipzig as champions. Fair play to them. Oh, Frankfurt. Ungutted. If they go down, I will not be playing Frankfurt. And I'd like to play against them. That's my German team. Other German team, Wolfsburg getting relegated. We definitely won't play against them. Uh, Real Sociedad going down. And another German team in Schalke going down. But look, there is, there's still Germans there. There's a lot of them. And Dortmund. Dortmund are in this league. They did not get promoted. We'll be playing against them. Potentially the best team in there. Uh, along with Leon, maybe. So, some big names in there. Celtic, Flamengo. I'm excited to play against them. It's going to be a very good season next season. This is where... They, I know I say it every time. This is where I think we will be mid-table, maybe the first season. Uh, we'll see. Uh, depending on what the actual... Uh, what the board want. Oh, my God. Manchester United lost it on their last game of the season. They lost on goal difference. Gutted. PSG with the champion, 69 points. Uh, Erling Haaland scored 25 goals across the season. Hertha Berlin, Napoli, Valencia and Athletic Bilbao are the clubs that we'll be facing next year in our league. Napoli, whoa, tough one. Going to be exciting though, but look at the clubs in here. Ajax really holding their own to be honest, uh, as well as Wolves. Wolves beating the drop. Fair play to Wolves. In other competitions, Brighton, the team we just beat, who did nothing against us, beat Manchester United in the final of the FA Cup. I'm as shocked as what you are, viewers.
And the Champions Cup final is going to be played out by Benfica and Inter. Liverpool, who have won it the last three seasons, have not been able to get to the final yet again. Uh, so Benfica and Inter will play it out for that final, well, for the, uh, the, the cup final, which will be played at Wembley. Big occasion, the biggest competition that there is in the UEFA World Cup, which of course we're not in anymore. Sassuolo beat Hamburg in the final 2-1. They've won that back-to-back. -back. Of course, they beat us in the final last season. Fair play to them. They've done it again. So there we have it then, viewers. A nice, quick, snappy episode to end this season, but really exciting stuff coming up for next season. Uh, I've got a big trance window ahead of me, I feel. Not in terms of quantity, but maybe in quality. I've got some big decisions to make, and I think you'll agree, especially with Nicolo Armini, the goal scorer in that last game. But let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Do I force him to stay, or do I sign this other player that I have? Of course, you don't know who it is, and I'm not going to give that away to you. I remember we did sign a youngster in the last episode. That has been confirmed. And I will show you him in the next episode as well. But my name is Omega Luke. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Although I don't know what you'd be doing uh, <laughs> in late in Season 4 and you haven't subscribed yet. But fair enough, if you haven't done so already, please do. Of course, if you'd like to support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Gaming. All the link is down in the description or at the end of the video. I'd really appreciate it if you can help me get to that $600 target and then some. Uh, that would be absolutely fantastic. But for me, there will be another player spotlight out on the weekend. Make sure you checked out yesterday's player spotlight because it's an absolute banger, potentially better than the John Ramirez one. So make sure you go and check that out. I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there's another one below that I have picked for you to have a look at. Also, if you'd like to sponsor me as a content creator by pledging to my Patreon page, you can do just that by following the link below and be like one of these wonderful people. Thank you.